Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to gather together under your banner of love, study your word, Father God, and to read impartation, Father God, receive impartation from you, Father God, and from each other that you reveal things to us, Father God. Give us the boldness and willingness, Father God, the, the freedom to share, Father God, for we don't hinder what the Holy Spirit can do, what he wants to say, Father God. Don't limit us, Father God, so we won't limit you that we will have a free flow, Father God, of your impartation this night. Right now, just bless our time together. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. All righty, if you haven't already, you may unmute. And for those of you that may not know, we are back on, well, we're in Galatians uh, chapter one. We had a very lively discussion last week. And based on, but the record that I kept, we got down to verse 10. And uh, to be totally honest with you, I have been mulling over, meditating on, re-mulling over, re-meditating on actually verses six through 10, because that's uh, it's gonna be the crutch of everything else that we do. So, um, I will solicit it, and, and I know some people, if you're free to talk about it, that will probably more than we covered. I'm sure we could cover this forever about the, the new doctrine. So I'll, I want to read through it again, and if there's any comments and or questions, uh, especially comments or additions or different ways of looking at it, different revelation that you've seen about this very, uh, to me, very important aspect that uh, Paul is writing the Galatians about, because one of my commentaries said this is the occasion of the letter. So everything after this declaration that Paul is making is based upon this condition. See, that's what an apostle will do. One thing he's going to do is just stick to the condition. You don't strut around, I'm an apostle, just look at me, blah, blah. It has to be a reason. So we're going to read through this to really nail down and get a clear focus of Paul's reason for writing a letter. Because there's no reason for like writing a letter, then the letter has no purpose. It's just a feel-good situation. You see what I mean? So this is, to me, it's pretty significant to know why Paul is writing this letter and, and structures the thing the way he did and the significance of it because it's still, it, I would say it's even more pertinent today. So again, we use the same thing, uh, same procedures. Raise your hand, either with the mechanically or physically, if you want to, un, uh, you know, go to the video. But anyway, get my attention if you have a comment. Please don't let us move on until every comment and question has been addressed. Okay, so uh, please do that. So we're in a Galatians chapter one. We're going to start with verse six, and I'm going to read it this time out of the New Living Translation. It's Paul writing. I am shocked that you are turning away so soon from God, who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be the good news. Let's just stop right there. So Paul is expressing two things right now. He's shocked that the people have turned away from this good news, but from you know, because he's saying, okay, God gave you this through his love and mercy. I understand you didn't understand the significance of what was told, what was told to you and what you received, because you understand you're writing to a church. You're not out evangelical trying to convert the lost. He's writing this to the church. These are people who have received the word of God, acting upon it to, to the degree that they are a church now. See, that's a big difference. He's not being an evangelist. He's actually writing to an established church because they were established on the doctrine of Christ and the good news of the gospel of Christ. Christ, he, he born of a virgin. He died on the cross and was re resurrected um, from the dead. And that provides our salvation. And our salvation and the foundation of the church and the doctrine is in us accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Master based upon the evidence that we've been given and the revelation that we received of who he is. So you understand how important that is. That, that was the foundation. But Paul, if you read on in verse 6, he says, said, you are following a different way 
that pretends to be the good news. And I think in the King James, it says, you are turning away so soon from him who called you to a different gospel. I really like the way the, the New Living puts it. He says it pretends to be the good news. I hope let that sink in and think about that. It pretends to be the good news. Now, I, I have a question that for, for discussion, if nobody has a question coming about this. Uh, what is the significance of this? What impact is this having if they're, they're going to follow something that pretends to be the good news? Why is Paul concerned? I know it's not in the notes, we didn't pass that out, but I, I want to stimulate discussion to get us really thinking about this. Anybody? What's the impact of the people changing uh, their good news? What is the good news? Because what's the basic of their foundation? Y'all out there, everybody's still muted. <laughs> Think yeah. <laughs> yeah, somebody said something. Okay, all right, so it's Catherine. Don't worry, I'm not, it's not a trick question. It's not a pop quiz. <laughs> well, it's, to me, more. it's like building um, a building, a house. If you do not have a good foundation and when the wind blows or the earth shakes, it's going to crumble. And that's what this is about the, the gospel. If you don't have the, the good grounding in the gospel of the word, then when something comes along and shakes you, you're going to fall off and run wherever you're going to hide at. That's my thought. I, I think that is a perfect analogy because if we, the church, change the foundation and it's not on Christ, then is it still have a found? Is it a church? Does the church have a foundation? Can it stand? That's what Catherine just said. That is how people who say who are believers that may be faithful church members can fall into situations that look like the devil is just taking them to task and they're just self-destructing. And sometimes it's because you have allowed your foundation to change. Yes, Sister Joseph. So, Pastor, I, you know what, just piggybacking on what Sister Catherine said, um, if you look at the, the very beginning, now that she says that, then I can see, because if you look at the very beginning, he says, I marvel that, you know, not in, uh, you know, in the New King James, right, that you're mm -hmm. turning away and the word so soon. Right. You know, like. As though when someone makes that kind of statement, it's like you haven't even been here long. Right. And like Sister you Catherine said, tested. you're not even grounded yet. And right. you're already being tossed away, you know, to something different. You don't even know what this is really about. Right. So Another you, excellent point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go on. No, 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 no. That's what I was saying because of that so soon. And then when she right. mentioned that, you can kind of, you know, look at it and say, well, yeah, good possibility. You know, if you're not grounded, <laughs> then. Right. And so, something comes, you're not grounded. You, it's like being off balance and you get pushed. Right. You are about, you're going down, you're going to fall if you don't study your foundation. So Paul is really concerned with this because he's saying, as if you, we change anytime people that say they're in Christ and it's a church, and you change the doctrine, guess what? Your foundation has to be in Christ, who is the chief cornerstone. So if that changes, the church changes. It at best has become a mutated version of Christ. Now, some extremes say it can't represent Christ because the foundation is not Christ. That's me. I'm kind of an extreme. I got my Iman cap on and I'll be like the Taliban. <laughs> so you can't have a foundation that's outside of Christ and represent Christ. I don't see how that's possible. That's why this is, is essential. Yes, Eddie. 
uh, Tamika, whichever you want you to Hey, it's Tamika. I, I just wanted to piggyback to say, like you were saying, if Christ is the foundation, the right. foundation is truth. Yes. So anything outside of that is built upon a lie. So the mm, gospel right. outside of the truth is a lie. So absolutely. And and it's 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 interesting that this is so significant, but it's so subtle that Satan, people can be used of Satan to change that foundation and convert a church into something that's not a church. And we can look at the extreme situations, but the worst situation is the people that still present it and, and all uh, intention or our, our reputation is functioning as a church, but it's not on the same foundation. All you do is just talk to some of the people in, in leadership, they'll, they'll be honest about it. Oh, just look at the doctrine. Now, I'm not saying to go around scrutinizing other folks' congregations, but the power, this is essential. Because like yeah. Sister Joseph said, you haven't even, you don't really know what you're leaving because you haven't given it time to be established. So you don't actually know what you're doing. And you do not know the significance of what you're doing. <laughs> That's why I said I'm marvel. You haven't even, you know, it's like, well, I'm going to New York. So I drive up around Raleigh. Man, I'm tired. I'm, I think I'll turn. New York can't be further up 95, so I'm going to hook off here on an even numbered highway, go east or west. I want to get to know, but I'm changing my foundation. See, to go from here to New York, you have to go north. But the same principle, if I want to try to pretend I'm going to New York and I'm going west and I'm still and everybody's still, still following, well, don't look like we're going to New York, but you just keep going. That's the same principle. So next thing you know, you're in China somewhere. Yes, Sister Jose. Oh, it's James. Oh, okay. All right, Hero. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing fine. How are you today, sir? I'm doing well. Yeah, you know, Paul, Paul is not by himself here, like it stated in the first verse, and all the right. brothers who are with him, right? So he he's not by himself here. Right. Uh, but the thing is, if if he knows what's going on, that means he he has heard it. Right. So the gospel, the, the perverted gospel is being spread amongst the people, even the, those that are not attending the services. So oh, that absolutely. is bad news. Yes, that is bad news uh, for the foundation. Uh, so um, <clears throat> that's what I want to say. Because I I, I, I know, once, once, we, once we get good news, you know, once once I learned that the healing is going on going on down there, you know, you start running to these things, you know. Right. So, uh, and if you're not getting the truth or the gospel, uh, as Paul uh, stated, if you're not getting the truth, then you're not getting a good foundation whatsoever. Right, and it will not sustain you. And verse yes. seven says, "But it's not the good news at no. all. You are being." Fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. So it's not an accidental thing. Mm -hmm. This is not like a minister or some leadership making an error, maybe misquote something, or uh, some things I've said, like, you know, not even get the particulars, not really. It is just people that are deliberately twisting the gospel away from the foundation. And to do that, you have to already know what the foundation is. Because you can go back to the discourse between the serpent and Eve. He asked her, did God really say this? Eve said, yes. And Eve said, oh, he knows. He remembers what God says. Then what he had to do? Well, I have to change it. You have been walking in what you know God said, but now I want to get you to believe that it's a different reason that God told you this. So now instead of you obeying God, I'm gonna give you a reason to doubt God, but making a subtle change. Because guess what? God, God don't want you to do that. He wants you to go over and do that because he you know if you do this, you're gonna be like him. Mm -hmm. But see, that should have been Eve should have like, well, that has nothing to do with anything. We were told just not to do this. It doesn't matter what the God's reasoning, who am I? So a lot of times, you know, when you get leaders that want to be uh, teach the gospel or proclaim the gospel or claim to be proclaiming the gospel in any way, they have to open themselves up to scrutiny. They, they need to be able to answer some questions. 
Because actually, as, as Elder John just mentioned, this situation got so bad wherever Paul was. I don't know. He may have been in Rome. I'm not sure where he wrote Galatians from, but he wasn't there. It wasn't like Paul was like, you know, the next city over, like I heard y'all don't know. This news I got all the way back to him wherever he was. So that's the, the significance of it. And he's saying that these people, you have to look at this, when this doctrine comes about, it's been deliberately twisted. And we got to be able to discern whether there was a mistake made. And you can know when somebody's mm -hmm. representing Christ, they got to be flexible enough to admit if they made an error, stand up for the error, open themselves up to scrutiny, and be able to answer questions, give an account for what they say, why they okay. said it, what it means. The recourse. You can't go run. Okay. I, I don't want to go out there. Run behind your robe and this, you know, phalanx of, of armor barrels and stuff. You can't get to the guy. Like, I got some questions about what you just said, but you don't get to answer those. So that's how we have to rely on the Holy Spirit and know what God is saying for ourselves. So when something comes at it that doesn't line up with what we already should know, we're not to receive it because it tells us what to do here. Verse 8 says, let curse let God's curse fall on anyone, including us, or even an angel from heaven who preaches a different kind of God's good news than the one we preach to you. Verse 9, I say again that we have said before, if anyone preaches any other good news than the one you welcomed, let that person be accursed. So Paul is, again, as Elder John pointed out, we emphasize, and Sister Joseph was talking about that along with Sister Catherine, these people had the foundation. They had the truth. They had it. They knew the truth. Paul says in this that they welcomed the truth. So it wasn't a case of ignorance. <laughs> so now you know the truth. And Paul said, well, you done got to see by somebody that twisted that changed it. He said, whoever does that, let them be a curse. <laughs> And we talked about that. I mean, excommunicate it. Kick them to the curb. Whatever way, you know, you have to do what we have to do. To sit under there and know that it's false teaching, well, guess what? You just saying that you submit to false teaching. You know it's false teaching, you're going to still sit there. Why are you still there? Like you go in the restaurant, they bring you a plate of poison. You just keep eating. Oh, I think I'm getting sick. Bring me a second helping of it. You be, I think I'm getting sicker. Can I have a third helping of it? Then you're like, dial 911, too late, you're gone now. <laughs> yes, but. I just, yes, wanted to say, I just wanted to say, go back to a question that you kind of like ask in your response um, about the teaching. Um, and it's a footnote, was a note here in, 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 in the first part of my Bible, which is the uh, uh, King James. It says that when this, when Paul was teaching, and he was telling them about if anybody come and teach you anything else, including me or an angel, or whatever, and I'm paraphrasing that area. He mm -hmm. said uh, what they do, what they was doing was they was uh, teaching that he was telling him what they was teaching. He said there was a, they were teaching people in Galatia uh, that Judaizers, which was false teachers who uh, insisted that belief in Yeshua, which is Jesus, was inadequate for salvation. So they was not right. preaching the good news. They was not right. teaching the good news. So these false teachers, who, uh, what my footnote said here, who was Judaizers, uh, false teachers who, in, who insist that Jesus, Yeshua, was not for salvation. And that was their lie. And so that's why Paul was telling them, if anyone come teaching you anything else, other than what, in other words, what I have taught you, what has been given unto me, including myself, you know, you, we know, all know who that is, but he, they was teaching, he was confronting the ones that were teaching falsely. Right. And, and making the, the congregation aware that this is how you know. Because a lot of times we get in the Bible, they like the, the decoder ring back. Most of you are too young to remember the decoder ring has been a cereal box. See, the Bible is like a decoder ring, so you can see Satan, you can see agents of Satan clearly. <laughs> They exposed. Right there, because all we have to do is know the truth. And if it doesn't line up with it, this is not of God. This is from the kingdom of darkness. This is of the spirit of the Antichrist. 
And you see, they were going at the, the foundation based on what he just said, right? That they were going at the foundation that just faith alone in Christ and submitting yourself to Christ is not enough. Yes, Pastor Day. I, I apologize. I, I was, what do you say about this? I'm asking everybody this question. What I see now is it's a little different what he's saying, and I know it is, but I just want to throw this out there. Now I see people. And I'm bumping into people that are doing this. They go to ministerial school. They go get their doctorate in ministry. And they get set in under a certain denomination. And then they get people who are like we were. We first got saved. They're zealous. And then you come in and you don't get, you get taught what seemed to be like the word, but you get taught more doctrine in that particular denomination. And you get these bylaws and all these things, the creeds that you have to, to be led by, and then the pastor, whoever gets set in there, they teach the congregation, you know, for salvation, you have to, you know, do these particular things, and it's not quite scripture, but it's close enough to kind of, you know, you, a zealous Christian, think they're doing a good thing, and then, you know, what do, <laughs> how do you approach that? I, I, I'm just asking this, I know what I do, but Cause it, I see oh, you're asking me, you're asking, you're asking everybody. <laughs> everybody, because I see that. And I see people I bump into and they say, oh, I'm in ministerial school and I'm under the Episcopalian, I'm under this and I'm getting trained and I get set in. And then I see what they're set into. It's really a, a it's a kind of denominational thing. And that you taught this, you have to do this. And, you know, what do you say to those people? When you see that it's not quite scripture, it's, it's, it's a good religion they're in but it's really not leading to really truth and that relationship with God as we know now that requires to have a relationship with God. What do you say to those ministers and those people who are doing that? And how, you know, cause it's more now, and I see that you see, even we come, it's more like a denominational thing. You know, I'm Baptist, I'm AME, I'm this, and the creeds and the thing they do and the, uh, what do you call it? The order of service and all that stuff, it really has nothing to do with biblical things. It's more so what a man wrote out. This is how we do things, you know, and you got the proper circumstance. And right. you know. I understand exactly what you're saying. I don't know if anybody wants to address it. I, I, I got my response, but I'm going to withhold it. Just in case anybody else got any opinion, comment, question about it, without want me to step in the bear trap again. I don't mind. I'm real comfortable. I've stepped in so many. Yes, Eva, that's your hand. You mute it. You mute it. You mute it. You are muted. <laughs> I'll go into the bad trap with you, baby. But this is something that um, I'm just giving the most high praise for because I was delivered from that. I was delivered from a doctrine of men into a marvelous light and life because I had to find out, I'm talking about me. I had to find out that religion is not going to save me, nor was it my salvation. So when I do meet people who are in uh, or teaching or even in ministerial school, you know, even me and my husband, we went to ministry training school. But the thing mm -hmm. about it is, if you, if, if I were to go on and teach what, um, some of the things that I was taught, now that I know that that was not a foundation, all I'm doing is imparting what I was taught by a man that perhaps did not have the revelation right. of a true teaching. So, so we have to be very prayerful and watchful what and who we stand before and who, who and what stands before us. So when we do minister to these people, they can only teach you what they have been taught. I learned that from experience. My pastors that I've had can only teach me as far as they went. And if that study or whatever was not there for them to be delivered, and I'm not ashamed, I was delivered from religion. I have been delivered from the doctrine of men and the doctrine of demons. Amen. I now take forth the full doctrine of our Lord and Savior who? Jesus Christ. That's yes. the only doctrine that I know. And I'm yes. finished. Sister Joseph, uh, Elder Jones, I don't know which. Y'all sharing a speaker, I guess. Whoever it is. We yeah. are. We're sharing it. Okay, um, yeah, it, it, it was, Either it one was of you or both. 
And the, the, what I was going to say, I mean, just to piggyback basically on what Sister Eva said, is that, um, and, and, and I, I understand what you're saying, Pastor uh, um, Dave, it, but for me, it was totally different. I was brought up under, you know, I grew up in the Catholic church. And then I, you know, when the Lord truly called me, when I accepted Christ in my life, then this became something that I really wanted to know. I mean, the word of God, I really wanted to learn. So that's why I pursued school thinking that that's what I was good. I was going to get more. You understand you, when you're trying mm -hmm. to get grounded in the word, I felt that maybe if I go to school and get a degree in, 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 you know, in just biblical studies, because that was my, what my degree was in. I didn't want to, you know, take no over nobody's church or learn how to do anything like that. I just wanted to know the Bible and study it because so many people taught it so differently. So I, for me, that's what, but then even in learning exactly what Sister Eva says, in all the knowledge that they give you, every book that I have at my house that I, I got through school, the only thing, the only way that we learn this Bible is through revelation. Yep. All the, everything mm -hmm. that I have is nothing but history, <clears throat> but revelation is what gives me wisdom. Amen. 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 Well said, because when you look at, at that, you know, Pastor Day's question, and I can understand the significance of it, I wouldn't say I would necessarily criticize somebody that went through the former religion of that because it can be learned. I mean, it's things that you need to learn and give you revelations. Nothing wrong with pursuing that. But we we have to, it's not that when it comes up, I am trying to discern, are these people representing that denomination or are they representing Christ? Is their motive in out? It's an individual thing. But even the existence, and I'm pretty radical, the existence of the denominations from my view and my limited study is not even of God anyway. Why he's going to divide us? The denomination, you know, the word, it's a, it's a smaller version of something. See, the Roman Catholic Church, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sister Joe said, they said that they are the only true church. <laughs> yes, and basically, right? Sister Joe said, you chime in, help me if I'm wrong. Because I read part of their... Uh, the they said they're the only true church. So they said all the rest of us are fakes. <laughs> yep. They really do. And I'm not criticizing, that's just what they do. So, so when someone, when you're dealing with someone that's like this, if I hear more emphasis being put on their religion and the protocols of their denomination and Christ is excluded, I, I, I would get to be troubled <laughs> about where their allegiances lie because we can suddenly get hooked in that. And I try to be a good Episcopalian and I'm not really being a good <laughs> disciple of Christ. So I can't blankly say all oh, were like that. <laughs> so the main thing is, I, if I had to interact with them, I would wonder, is this person, I don't know how you structure, try to find out, is this person a disciple of Christ? But we can roll. If mm -hmm. you're a disciple of Episcopalian mm -hmm. and I'm not Episcopalian, well, I'm excluded. <laughs> you see what a denomination can do? If you don't subscribe to all of our doctrine, now you're not included. Like the lady told me in that one, well, I don't know what denomination it was that I wasn't a minister because I wasn't part of the nomination. And I'm like, what, you've known me like three minutes and you've already judged me. <laughs> right. It just, it, it blew my mind. <sighs> you don't know nothing about me. And see, that's what the denomination to do. It can cause you to exclude people. Mm -hmm. Yes, Pastor. Dan. Yeah, just additional. And I said that for this reason, because like all of us, there's nothing wrong with getting a degree in biblical nothing. study or anything like that. But just like, Christ, when he was talking to the Pharisees in two particular scriptures, in the Old <clears throat> Testament and the New, he said that the scriptures, when we studied the scripture, we studied the particular doctrine. I mean, we're trying to get closer to God and because we are theologians. We're trying to study God and get close. But he said the scriptures should lead you to me. Amen. Right. Not lead you to a doctrine of man. The scriptures, we study those scriptures in our revelation. It leads us to, the scriptures leads us to the one who wrote it. Amen. in that relationship right. and sometimes even good christians we can get lost in those details of denomination and forget right. that this right here studying this supposedly us to him yes 
Yeah, Christ is the foundation. It's just and it's easy to put that doctrine in. You know, we can easily put something else at the head. Yeah. I, you know, just, just for information, I mean, I got saved at a, uh, attending a straight up Baptist church, but I saw mm -hmm. more of Christ than I saw just being a Baptist. They weren't shouting around, oh, you got to be a Baptist yeah. church. I saw more of Christ than mm -hmm. I saw of this doctrine at just, you know, we're just Baptists and everybody else is messed up. I didn't see that. So I think that I used that that church. I saw more of Christ's characters in the people there than I saw people just trying to be good Baptists. They were right. being good disciples who just went to a Baptist church. To me, it's a big difference. I'm a disciple to go to this church, but I am this, whatever the nomination is. I think that's a uh, wrong priority. Yes, I don't know. I'm sitting, oh, uh, I'm tired, uh, Sister. Sylvia, Brother Kenny, I see a hand. I'm not sure what you it is. I see it there. Either the greens. I'm sorry, but no. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. The hand was just up. I'm not, I don't even see it up here on my computer. Oh, oh that's my curse. I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all forgive me. I'm still <laughs> learning this. Okay. All right. Moving right along. Maybe it's just going to cap here. So, okay, Sister Laura, I see that is an actual hand. But, Pastor Ed, you know, e even in those doctrines, I've been to many churches mm -hmm. since, since I first gave my life to Christ. It is so hard to follow people. It's hard right. to follow people in what they want you to do or what they think you should be doing in the way that you should be. That is so, so very difficult. Right. And if you're if 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 you're not following the word and getting right. an understanding of the word, you are so twisted. You will be right. very, very twisted. And you're right. Not only, yeah, not only is it so hard to follow, it's impossible. It's because it can keep changing. This pastor may want to emphasize this over that. You know, hello, service not at 10, it's 9 to 10 30. And, and you know, it's nothing wrong with that. The pastor can change it. But when you people are, are, are driving it, see, we as human beings are not consistent enough to provide steadfast guidance that will relay uh, or cause people to get the full revelation of Christ from our human efforts. As Sister Josette so adequately pointed out, we have to rely on the revelation of the Holy Spirit and not on men. We only should line up with people who carry on, who conduct themselves in accordance with the way that the Holy Spirit has revealed to us, this is the way God would have it done. You know, I'm stumbling over that, but that, that has, to be, has to be revelation. It can't be taught. They're like, you know, in spite of all, Sister said, all that learning she has, which is not a bad thing. Ultimately, she, you don't really know what's going on until you get revelation. I got all this information, but it's like dormant. Until the Holy Spirit activates it, it's just information. But once the Holy Spirit reveals it to us, it becomes power. Because now I can put it into action. Because <laughs> we never we never put it into action, we don't describe to it, that means we're not going to do it. I'm not going to live. I'm just going to be a church member. I'm just going to keep going to church. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to keep my head down. I'm going to make sure they see me throw this money in here and I'm going to do this. And I ain't going to cuss. I'm going to get to my knocker. So if I was drunk the night before, they're not going to smell it. I'm going to spray all the cigarette smoke off me. And <laughs> they're seeing a lot of that. That won't cut it. Uh, yes, but <laughs> I didn't know I knew all them tricks, right? <laughs> I just want to say, and you just said something that was key. That was in my spirit. That um, uh, you said something that concerning the Holy Spirit, the Ruach. Once we are saved, and when Paul was teaching Galatia, once you come into the knowledge of who the Most High, who God is, and once you know who you are in Him, and you accept Him, the hope of glory in you by His Spirit. You said a key word, and I think that was a word that the Most High gave us about three years ago. And I can remember, I think he, he, he was teaching it through me. We must remember that only he can activate. Right. And when he 
activates things, when he activates stuff in, uh, in us, it, then it will bring a revelation. Because as long as something is dormant, that don't mean that a, uh, when you go to a pool, if the, if the water ain't moving, it's dormant. If you go to a pond, you know, you get algae and everything in it. That's something like sin. But if it's not moving, that don't mean that the pond ain't there. That don't mean that you're not saved. What it is is that you it's the relationship part, I think, with Pastor Dave taught uh, who that was uh, taught on, uh, Elder uh, Pastor Jones one, is it's the relationship because something that's not activated, there's no relationship there as it should be. You got nothing to do with your salvation. You're still going in, but maybe you're going to miss out on some things that he want to reveal to you by revelation. And so that the Holy Spirit will activate. That's why he's the teacher. When he, right. when he teaches us, we are activated to learn what he's trying to reveal to us by revelation. And that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Amen. You see, Paul is reminding the Galatians that, look, you had revelation of what, of who Christ <clears throat> is and what he means as the foundation. Because you started to act upon it. Mm -hmm. Because you can't get chained away from the gospel if you didn't receive the gospel. I'm going to say that again. You can't get pulled away from something you didn't have. So these are people that did not know the truth. They hadn't received the truth. These were people who had received the truth, who had mm -hmm. gotten it and had received <laughs> it. And now here comes something else. And Paul, like, Sister Joseph said, Paul, I can't believe, man. I, like, I, turned, I, I was just here last week, and y'all were good. And now y'all doing this crazy stuff. Y'all don't let some clown come here and tell y'all something that's contrary to what I said, and you fools are following it. That's my paraphrase of what he's telling the Galatians. Let's go on. <laughs> I don't see it in the other hand. I mean, it had to shock them. Like, you had the real things. Like, okay, you had, I gave you gold. And you are trading it away for fool's gold and counterfeit. And you idiots don't are not even aware of what you're doing. You're trading away the genuine object for something that is not. I can't believe that you have so soon lost sight of what is real and what is not. Can't believe you don't receive the truth and you get tricked so easily. But let's go on. Verse 10 says, obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. Like Paul said, I know I'm taking y'all off. I don't even care. I got to do this. This is what God's telling me to do. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. So Paul, like, let, I'm letting y'all have it because I'm following Christ. And even if he, you know, if y'all don't like it, it doesn't matter to me. We're going on. Now, let's look at the remainder here where Paul defends his apostolic ministry. And this is where I was talking about ministers of uh, people. Anybody that's going to minister the word of God has to be able to, should be able to, should be willing to account for their actions, to account for the revelation that they're given and not just say something, okay, just because I got a title, you're supposed to follow. Paul is not saying that. He's really clarified, look, this is what you've given up. This is where you got it. This is where I got what I gave to you. So now he's reemphasizing what it is you are giving up when you take on a new doctrine, Paul says, I'm reading, I'm standing in a new living. Verse 11 says, dear brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is not based on mere human reason. Just like Joseph, Joseph said, he said, it's not based on mere human reason. Now, he just said human reason, nothing wrong with human reason, but it's not based on just that. Because anybody can come up, any con man or deviant, I mean, Satan, he creates all kinds of people that can turn a phrase and influence people greatly with just human reason. Because the first thing that Satan is going to try to do is get you to power down the Holy Spirit in you. So I want to talk to your flesh. I don't want to talk to the Holy Spirit. That looks too much like Christ. I know what, what Christ is going to do to me. I know what that's. So I want to go around him. I want you to just ignore that this is here. And let me talk to your flesh. See, that's what he did to Eve. <laughs> he went around the spirit to talk to her flesh and gave her things that would appeal to her flesh, and she fell for it. Not criticizing you, because I would fail for it too. So we have to understand that's still his methodology. Paul said, look, this is a company in reason. So don't think I just went somewhere and thought something up and gave you something. He said, I received my messages from no, my message from no human source, and no one taught me. 
Instead, I received it by direct revelation from Jesus Christ. So Paul said there was no middleman. This was direct revelation from Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now think about this. How did the other 12 apostles receive their instructions? Directly from Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? And say, okay, go off and study. I'm writing out some books. Here's some manuals. Go, you know, and there's nothing wrong with the studying, but we got to understand that Paul is letting them know, look, this is so powerful. It didn't come through human means. This is supernatural. It came from Jesus Christ himself from me to you. And really what Paul is saying, really, the gospel I share with you is not even my gospel. I didn't make this up. I'm just telling you what Jesus told me. <laughs> See how simple that gets to be? And actually, if you're going to minister on his behalf, we're not authorized to tell people or to minister to people in any way except for what Christ is telling them through the Holy Spirit. We don't have the luxury of making stuff up or go around and get a magazine and read statistics and read the latest polls or what this group is doing or what that group is doing or quoting statistics from this or statistics from that. But I don't care about that. You can ball that up. You can, hey, I tell you what, you can shred that sermon. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> no revelation in it. But you don't need no revelation to go <clears throat> preach about some numbers out of a magazine or So Paul is saying, my instruction, this gospel came directly from Christ. Let's go on. 13, you know what I was like when I followed the Jewish religion, how violently, how I violently persecuted God's church. I did my best to destroy it. This is Paul right now. Like, look, he's giving them more evidence. Look, this, this is not me. Matter of fact, this church that you've established, this foundation, this gospel that you received came from Christ through me. And I'm a man who tried to destroy the very thing that Christ is now having me to establish. <laughs> so Paul, like in my flesh, he didn't why you think my flesh? No, my flesh didn't do this. My flesh wanted to destroy this. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you see how he said, I did a 180. Christ didn't change me around, he used me. So you, you need to understand that I was so hell bent on my religious standing that I tried to destroy everything outside of it. Mm -hmm. And did Paul say he did his best? You know, according to New Living Translation, I don't know how it dives up over there. So he did his best to destroy it. Paul said, I was far ahead, 14. I was far ahead of my fellow Jews and my zeal for the traditions of my ancestors. Like Paul, he says he's like the chief, he's a Pharisee among Pharisees. Paul said, the other people just believed, you know, they then went through the ritual. But Paul was like, tell them, I was a radical. I was an extremist. I was a zealot for what I believed. To the point, I wanted to eradicate things that conflicted with what I believed. For the tradition of his ancestors. And you think about now, because you see he's getting through things right now of what he's saying. Because if you know, if you read through Galatians, because, you know, jump ahead briefly. Because one of the issues was, if you're not circumcised, you're not saved. That was the Jewish tradition. You got to be circumcised to complete this process. And Christ never said that. And Paul said, look, I was zealous about what I used to believe too. But this is not required now, but I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Verse 15 says, but even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. Then it pleased, uh, then it pleased him to reveal his son to me, so that I would proclaim the good news about Christ to the Gentile. When this happened, I did not rush out, consult with any human being. So Paul, like saying, "Well, wait a minute. Even though I was out here trying to destroy the church, trying to destroy the work of God." because I was following my religion, even before I was born, I had already been chosen. That's how much revelation he had had. Because he understands, if, if Paul was in that uh, condition where he had been so zealous, he trying to start a pride, the church, 
And now Christ gives them a revelation of himself because they'll Paul, you can read it in the Acts about the conversion, how he, you know, Paul, we talked about that. We talked about how he said, you know, it's, how it's more difficult to kiss, kick against the goat. When are you going to learn, Paul, not to kick against the goat? See, all the while, Paul, all that zealousness was in Paul, all that spirit was in Paul, all that ability to assimilate information, all that ability to go out and learn things, to become that Pharisee, was there, was given by God. Paul just misapplied it by his lack of revelation. <laughs> Say it again. The only thing, all that power was in him was hearing it by only one thing, his lack of revelation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Elder John. See, that's important because we all have all these powers, all these giftings. And if they don't come forth to glorify yeah. God, that's because we lack revelation. And when you don't have revelation, you use your skills in an ungodly way, and it may not seem ungodly. But I would venture to say there are many people in many pulpits right now that are operating on the lack of revelation and just using their human abilities, hiding behind their credentials, which was never given to them to, to go out and misuse. Because I don't think any uh, seminary is going to, you know, give you all that training, give you a degree and say, okay, go out and deceive the people. I am, I've never been, but I am positive they don't do that. <laughs> so you got all this information, but you don't get revelation what to do with it. So Paul let them know, you know, I didn't have the revelation, but now I know it didn't come from, from human beings. So he did not rush out and consult with any human being. Now, why did I want to stop right there? Why did why do you think Paul say I probably just why do you think Paul didn't feel the need to go to consult with anybody? You got the other 12 apostles there. You know that you know. <laughs> oh, what's that, Pastor Day? So that, when you know that you know and you know truth. That's it. <laughs> you don't need to run off and get don't up. Need no side. <laughs> he didn't need it. Now, I understand the process. I'm not saying we don't need to go out and get formal education because it's good to learn the history and how to put the Bible together in some order and to know why this was, the deeper things of it. If not, we just end up saying words. But when you can learn what this meant, and I'm sure I'm going to speak on have Sister Joe said, you see a biblical study, I'm sure she learned not just this, she learned the depth behind these events and those principles through the Bible. And Sister Joe said I was speaking on your behalf, but if I made a mistake, please correct me right now. You learn the depth of what it meant. So now when you get revelation, you just don't get revelation of the surface. You get revelation of the depth of what this means. So there's a value in this all this knowledge and learning that we get when we put that elevation on it as that activator, like putting that blasting cap in dynamite, you know, you can throw a dynamite stick at people all you want. Hit them with it, beat them with it. You don't put a blaster cap on, it has no power. Like, oh yeah, I'm trying to blow you up. Said, oh, boy, you ain't got no blaster cap, I ain't scared of that. See, that's what we do, we come to save. We come to him with dynamite, but we ain't got no blasting cap. <laughs> so you ain't got the Holy Spirit with you, I ain't got to listen to you. Because <laughs> you ain't got no power. <laughs> but you put a blasting cap on it like Paul did, and then he takes off. That's what happened when we get that revelation added to that information that we received the formal training. See, they both work together and they will coincide and work in harmony when that person gets revelation. The problem is you can't get taught revelation. You have to pursue revelation yourself. I don't know any destructor and correct me wrong that could teach you revelation. We got to willingly submit to God and give, let him give us the revelation of things that we've been told. <laughs> uh, moving right along. I'm, out, I'm looking, oh man, I'm running out of time, but it's all good. Uh, 17, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to consult with those who were apostles before I was. Instead, I went to Arabia and later returned to the city of Damascus. Then three years later, I went to Jerusalem to get to know Peter 
And I stayed with him for 15 days. The only other apostle I met at that time was James, the brother of the Lord. I declare before God that I am writing to you, that what I am writing to you is not a lie. Paul, like I declare before God, I am not writing you a lie. This is not from me. I did not make this up. I am not trying to trick you. This is what God told me. Now this is what I've told you, and you can do one or two things with it. You can receive it or reject it, but if you receive it, you need to receive only it. <laughs> That's the stipulation. Once you receive this from God, you don't need anything else. There is no plan B. There's no supplement. There's no appendices. There's no precursors. There's no volume two. There's no call it later. No renew. A subscription to get the rest of the information. Paul said, I have given you what God given me, and this is all that you need for the foundation of the gospel, and you have to stand on it. <laughs> That's how easy it is. Ah, uh, where am I? Okay, 21. After that visit, I went north to the provinces of Syria and Cilitica. And still, the Christians in the churches of the, uh, Judea did not know me personally. All they knew was that people, all they knew was that people were saying, the one who used to persecute us is now preaching the way, very faith he tried to destroy. And they praise God because of me. Paul, like guess people in Jerusalem don't even know me. All they know is I used to be the <laughs> devil's agent. And now I'm out preaching and supporting and reinforcing the very thing I was trying to destroy. <laughs> so Paul, like I will let my reputation, my actions speak for me. I don't need to be certified by men because once we get revelation from Christ, like, like Pastor David said, we don't need to go to anybody else. All we need to do for the rest of our Christian journey, to use that term, is to just find and, and affiliate, link ourselves with like-minded people that's going to help edify us as we edify them. See, that's our responsibility. And do not deviate from that foundation. The Sister Catherine said, because we go building on another foundation, go up, we're we going to crash and burn. We're going to crash and burn. All you do is look around at some people in the church. I know things happen, certain unavoidable things in life that's going to happen. But I am a true believer that some believers crash and burn because they change their foundation. Because there's one thing about that foundation. You don't have to slide all the way off it. All you have to do is modify it. Something to come along. Your house not square where it's leveled off. Well, I'll move this. Okay, now the whole house coming down because you modified this. Well, I only did a little of this. But guess what? You just gave Satan that open. You don't need a lot. <laughs> So I said, you've gotten off Christ, now, now you don't have revelation of what the Holy Spirit is. Now I'm doing all kind of crazy stuff. People, I'm sitting up in a dead church. Well, because you're a dead believer. <laughs> the church dead, why are you still there? <laughs> okay, I better leave that one alone. <laughs> so we got to understand that, you know, we're going to move on to chapter two the next time. But we got to understand the value of keeping that foundation, the foundation no matter what, and we do not need to seek it. We don't need to be reaffirmed. We don't need some super Billy Graham type evangelist to come back and reassure us that we say and we need to be preached to every so often or go through this drama. Okay, it's this time of the year. It's time for me to rededicate all, all that stuff. I'd be dedicated. Why, you know, why do you get away? What do you need? How many times? It's like, okay, you know the course. Why do you keep getting off it? I'm thinking, I'm a pastor. I'm not responsible to keep putting you on the course. Guess what? I'm trying to stay on it myself. <laughs> Just stay on it. Just do what you know. Operate in that revelation. If you don't feel like you have revelation, pray, pray to God for the revelation. Because you have it. It's in there. And I'm going I'm to leave on this. Because <laughs> a lot of believers may make this error. If you haven't seen the movie, The Last Dragon, that's your homework. Look at The Last Dragon with Bruce Leroy shown up. <laughs> and his master kept telling him, you have looked everywhere except for one place. 
He had went through all that training and still didn't know who he was. And when he looked internally, that's when he got revelation of who he was. <laughs> he was equipped. And we, you know, I know it's a movie. I'm just using that as an example. But see, what we have to do instead of waiting for somebody to, uh, what's the word I'm, I'm looking for here, to uh, substantiate us externally, why don't we look internally? Get ourselves quiet before God and ask him to reveal me to me. <laughs> Try that. That's what Lee, Ruth Lee had to do. He had to look at himself and figure out who he was. And he was like, oh, I am the master. You know, I know it's in the movie context, but um, the principle is not who the master was. The, the principle is he had to reach that point that he had to look within himself to find out who he was because God had put things in each of us that if we open it up, present it to God, asking God to reveal it to us, he will reveal us to us. And it's not about trying to expose sin. It's really not. God will tell you, this is where your blasting cap is. You've had the dynamite all along, spiritually speaking. You just need to know where your blasting cap is. It's how to use the Holy Spirit in these situations to see you get revelation of your talent and everything that we have and how to use it within the foundation. We don't need to challenge find. We don't need to seek for additional information. We need to pull a Bruce Leroy. Look within ourselves at God. Show me what's in me <laughs> that's giving me the power to obey you. Amen. And if something missing, show me that and show me how to pursue that. It's really that easy. He'll show us our blasting cap. If you have, don't have it already. So uh, any questions there? We're going to take about four minutes here. Uh, and I appreciate the way that went. Uh, these outlines take on a life of their own. No questions, comment before I sign off. Okay. I'm going to pray and give you about four minutes or so to uh, <clears throat> fellowship. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, that you have revealed yourself to us. We thank you, Father God, for the foundation that you laid once and for all. Father, keep us ever mindful, Father God, of the power, the strength, the courage, the wisdom that's in this foundation, Father God. Reassure us that your foundation is all in, all that we need, Father God. May we embrace it and reinforce it, Father God. And may we never, never, never deviate from the foundation that you set. Yeah. Yes. So that we may, Father God, continue to grow stronger and stronger into what you want us to be. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat>